Okay, hello. So today I'm going to review the fourth um, joint Hugo and Nebula nominated work. This time this is uh, by Terry Beeson. And again, Terry Beeson is a very underground sci-fi writer. So I don't have a hard copy of his work and I'm still hunting for it. But this is in my Kindle, a short story collection of here, his Bears Discover Fire and Other Stories. And today we're going to... Uh, review bears discover fire okay so what is this uh, short story about so it concerns a family you know siblings and uh, a guy and his son one day um, they had a flat tire and then they were trying it, it was night to start they were trying to fix it and then suddenly they noticed that these bears you know they're holding these um, branches and twigs with fire in them okay and then eventually it became a you know a sensation in the, in the neighborhood that indeed just like the title suggests the bears have indeed discovered fire and so you know it, it was all the ruckus in their town you know the police were trying to you know distance the folks from the bears who are bringing fire because they could be dangerous they noticed that the bears have stopped hibernating because instead of going somewhere you know they they, they, they gather into this uh, group and then in, in near a fireplace like that just like human beings and you know um the, the, they had this uh grandmother who initially hated uh bears which they left in some sort of a home for the aged uh, type of thing and then they visited her one time um she she was gone she disappeared and then they discovered that you know, they, they visited, uh, the, the, the grandmother uh, visited a group of bears who was just sitting there with them. You know, the bears didn't hurt her. She was chewing tobaccos where, while the bear were like chewing berries or something. And then uh, they went to her. They, they noticed how she was at, at peace with the, in the presence of the bear. So they just like brought um, blankets over there and then eventually um, the grandmother, you know, died of um, exposure. And... You know, a lot of people uh, like the story but are confused what it is really trying to say, you know. Uh, most people um, think of it like as an allegory or as a, as, a, as a comparison to how, you know, the bears uh, preserved um, camaraderie uh, between themselves even though it, it was very late. They are technologically late in discovering fire while, while we are like losing that fire you know of um, our what they call this kinship with one another yeah you can do that but again when i read sci-fi i'm not really you know after those types of you know some sort of literally interpretations that would give a literature major a boner you know i'm a scientist i'm a physicist and i am when i read sci-fi i am most concerned with the science behind it Okay, so this one unfortunately is a little weak on the uh, science, and again, I, I that's the main reason why I read sci-fi. It's because obviously I like the I want to see how you can push science beyond the frontiers that we have today. Okay, without the boundaries or the restrictions set by you know um, the research just that you can do in the or the budgetary constraints that you have in the academic setting. All right. Uh, so the thing is, if you read sci-fi and then you're like, it, it's not wrong to do this, but personally, if I if I want the, you know, the literary techniques, the literary uh, expressions, interpretations hidden within a short story, I wouldn't read sci-fi. I'd, I'd look for something like a realist fiction, for example, right? Instead of delving into a sci-fi. So even though the science here is not that uh, strong typically, right? I still loved it because... While I was reading the story, it got me thinking about the possibilities of, yeah, what if bears, what if any animal in general discover fire, you know? Because the, the, the fire thing, you know, the, the, the capabilities of uh, controlling a fire, taming it and using it to help us in our daily lives, that is something that is uniquely human, okay? And, you know, we really believe that no one has tamed it. So what, what, what? What are the 
ramifications in our society if animals begin discovering fire like yeah, do we do we encourage them do we help them do we like stop them in their tracks like that thankfully for for our case uh, human beings when we began discovering fire you know no one pushed us into doing pushed us into doing that no one stopped us from discovering it and in fact in the early times the discovery of fire it really helped a lot in our civilization you know like for example due to fire it it helped us in our let's say defenses against the some predators it helped us you know extend our activities late into the night because instead of like sleeping when it gets dark like you look at chickens right if, if you've seen chickens like uh, uh, they do something during the day when the light is up but in the dark they do nothing right so imagine if us humans couldn't do couldn't extend our activities beyond daylight right so the fire when we discovered fire we were able to do that because we had now lighting even though this it is already evening even though it is already during the night okay so it is um, it is in, in that way it is very relevant you know it helped us widen our palate our diet because it allowed us to cook you know so even instead of like wasting energy chewing very hard raw meat like have you tried eating that we learned to cook and in cooking you know we we were able to conserve energy in digesting these foods we were able to kill bacteria that were that were that would otherwise be present if you eat them raw right and so on so fire is really did a lot to you know further our civilization so the thing is what is now the status when it comes to uh, fire in relation to other other animals and again thanks to this um, short story and again this is why i read sci-fi thanks to this story i began you know looking up at the you know what what anim which animals were able to um uh, discover fire like how far are they from taming this very important uh you know concept of uh, fire right and what, what what i did is first of course you see like I, I found this video of a an ape right bonobo something you know but yeah he can do fire he can like operate um lighter he can cook his own what they call that marshmallow you put on the fire uh s'mores i think and then he eats it yeah it's very cute and all but what i'm interested in is you know animals discovering fire in a natural way like no one is because in that video like she the, the monkey the, the ape has this trainer who was like oh yeah use this lighter up ah, put out the fire like that no that's not what i'm looking for I'm, i was looking for things that are a little bit natural okay and that led me to this uh, paper in 2010 okay this this uh, paper is a study so let me read it reaction to fire by savanna chimpanzees at fungoli senegal conceptualization of fire behavior on the case for chimpanzee model Okay, so here, so it's a fairly, fairly short, short paper published in the Amer American Journal of Physical Anthropology. But the, the main thesis of the paper is that they discovered that chimpanzees already has this basic first step in the mastery of fire. Okay, because they reason uh, here in uh, the second page of their paper. Okay, they said that in order to um, master fire, there are like certain stages that you need to undergo okay so i believe it's in page four right somewhere here um the stages that you need okay so that you can master fire so the first one the first stage they call this the cognitive stages it's called the conceptualization of fire that is an understanding of the behavior of fire under varying conditions that would allow one to predict its movement thus permitting activity in close proximity to the fire okay and this is very important because other animals when they see fire they like they think of it as like a oh, hot something dangerous and in fact I, I don't know i think some of them think of it as a another living animal a predator that is after them you know so most animals when they see fire they like scurry away right they, they run away the nice thing is that um in, in these chimpanzees they they claim are already able to master this first step because during wildfires you know there are these controlled wildfires that they do to clean up an area that they could use later on for farming most animals when they do that wildfire thing they like run away very stressed very scared but they claim that the chimpanzees here they're like 
so chill you know they're like when they see the fire they're like ah i know that i know that thing like i know it will go here and so on so they already have this first uh, first stage you know the conceptualization of fire they understand its movement they can predict where it goes and so on the second one and the third they don't have that we humans do the ability to control a fire that's number two involving containment providing or depriving the fire of fuel and perhaps the ability to put it out okay so so far we are the only uh, species capable of doing um, stage two at least that's in 2010 and then um, number three the third stage the ability to start a fire okay and of course the first stage is a prerequisite of the numbers two and three and it is claimed that of course and of course we, we, we that's why we are now here in our in the state of the civilization we've mastered those three stages this chimpanzee according to this paper they were already able to do stage one but the most interesting thing that i found is that in 2017 right another paper this one okay this one came out in 2017 in the journal of ethnobiology and it is entitled intentional fire spreading by firehawk raptors in northern australia okay and the awesome thing about this is that you know the chimpanzees they just react at the presence of fire these guys these firehawk raptors they actually this paper observed they actually spread the fire you know they help in the spreading of the fire they so what happens is when it is very hot typically the start of the of a wildfire and then the fire is already starting these birds would like pick twigs that are burning you know they, they will bring it in their beaks they will put it in other areas so that the fire could spread okay so they are really spreading the fire themselves and in fact you can argue that you know they're already in the stage two of that uh, stage that we've been um, talking about right because they are able to spread the fire themselves why do they do that they do that because they observe that during a fire it leaves a lot of like um preys running that they can hunt all right or in fact i don't know maybe sometimes they scavenge the ones that are left behind but typically when the fire is there these predator are uh, these preys come running and then they they get them you know so they, they were able to observe that ah if i make the if i make the fire spread spread free food right so yeah so again just reading this um sci-fi sci-fi short story um bears discover fire you know it 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 urged me it, it got me into thinking about the possibilities of you know other species other than human beings on discovering fire and that in my opinion is the importance the essence of science fiction okay at least as a scientist again i when i read it again i appreciate if there are like metaphors and so on that are hidden within you know but mainly i read science fiction for the science okay for the for the things that 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 for the ideas and the concepts that it offers that I would have, I wouldn't have like you know thought of if I hadn't read like if I hadn't read Bears Discover Fire I wouldn't have like seen these two papers right because again I'm a physicist like what what, what does a physicist you know what's what's his business doing in a journal of anthropology or ethnobiology right and again you maybe you can argue yeah eventually you will discover that no there there are a lot of you know things that are interested in science and these things it wouldn't have you know gone under my radar but thanks to this story you know right here i was able to read them and again currently now i know that there are certain types of species that indeed could um react like we do and can spread fire right so i don't know in the future if they could master that you know do we stop it what they think as human beings do we stop it do we do we encourage them i don't know you know but it, it, it's really you know we 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 are a living example that once you've mastered fire then that is a very huge step in like the, the the continuation of your and the improvement of your um civilization okay so again um thanks for watching i hope you learned something in this video and um the next for the next one i think we only have five short stories left that are jointly uh nominated for hugo and nebula and i'm gonna review them next okay so again um thanks for watching and i will see you in the next science fiction uh, video bye bye